Sexy Nerd, Grizzly McBee here, and you are listening to and watching Nerd is the New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast. This is episode number 176, and if you can't tell by what's behind my lovely guest today, uh, not really guest, more like uh, founder, co-host, creator, the man, the myth, the legend, you love him, uh, his favorite thing to eat is cordyceps mushrooms, Mr. Wildfire One. Give me them cordyceps! <laughs> And if you guys can't tell today, uh, the topic we will be talking about today is The Last of Us, the TV series. Yeah, no, uh, not, not mainly, necessarily mainly these guys. but season one. Well, yeah, those guys, just not, not those guys. These guys, but not these guys, yeah. Yeah. You know, Big Papa Pedro. Let's just jump right into that, you know. A lot of people give him shit, but he's a goddamn good actor. Like, you know, I, I, I was watching, I got into Burn Notice, I think I told you. Because I, I, you love, I love Bruce Campbell, and there was an episode where Pedro Pascal was on it, and I swear to God that guy's a vampire because he did not look, he doesn't look any different. He I, again, my point is, is this, is he, he doesn't look like he's aged a day. Yeah, but if you look at like some of his earliest things that he's done compared to like now, he's aged a lot. I. I guess, like, his early stuff, yeah. yeah. Like, what was... So, a lot of people give him shit, saying that he's, you know, a shit actor, shouldn't be put in this role, shouldn't be put in that role. I think he's an amazing actor. He is freaking fantastic. And he's worked his way up from, like... Nothing. Bit parts, yeah. Yeah. From was it? just cameos to, yeah. you know... Leading role behind Grogu in Mandalorian, so to as The Last of Us, to playing the biggest drug cartel leader in the history of, you know, the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> we know that Pedro Pascal's in a lot of stuff, and and I heard about him being you know cast as Joel in uh, The Last of Us season one, uh, and I honestly I, I didn't really have any gives her takes on it. I was more worried about the characters and, and, and how they'd be written in. And if, uh, honestly, if, if HBO was going to Hollywood fight the last of us. Yeah. Uh, and basically add agendas and all this other stuff. Uh, but they did good. They, you know, like all in all, they, the fuck it. I fell in love with it and I played the games. Yeah. Every you know we'll we'll go over these little by little. I mean we're we're not gonna talk too much about it because if we will we'll be here all night. Uh, so Especially with the two of us. Yes. So, like we'll start off with the things that like they changed in the in the show. I think that the the things they changed in the show were good. They're like perfect. I know that there was a few people out there that complained that uh and you know what. If you didn't like it, you didn't like it. it, is what it is, but this has come from the perspective of two people that love this, sh- this series, so... Oh, and that, that have played the games a lot. And we've actually talked about it, too, in, we... in other podcasts. Like, favorite gaming series. Yep. Oh, the Last of Us. <laughs> yeah, definitely, you know? A lot of, and a lot of people, you know, before I go any further, the, a lot of people bitched and moaned about The Last of Us Part 2. I was one of those guys that went into it and went like, okay, I can see some of what these people are saying, but I can also see, I, I'm not judging it upon that. I thought it was a good game. Despite certain big things happening, no spoilers, because you people are watching this probably, either the, the people watching this either have, have played the games and know what's happening or do not, or only know what's going on because of the series. And I'm not going to go because yeah. season two is going to be probably all about that. <laughs> yeah. But certain things happen in season two that even like, I was like, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. But <clears throat> if certain things didn't happen in see in, in part two of the last of us, um, we wouldn't have gotten probably the ending we got would have got. So it's almost like it's almost like putting up a Jar Jar Binks in Star Wars. I mean, look at look. Okay, we've talked. I know we've talked about this, and I'm I'm tangenting off of it. But Jar Jar was like an intricate intricate part of the Star Wars history, whether we like it or not. Yeah. You know, be, either he was playing stupid or he was stupid, and he was out there and he got certain things done. Moving on, moving on. Let's go. Let's go to like what the the first episode kind of actually. 
almost almost like brought more fear into the whole cordyceps thing you know yeah. just thinking about you know that they had this at the very beginning they had this like doctor on a talk show in like the what the 50s or something the 70s something like that mm -hmm. and uh they're talking about cordyceps and all these other types of mushrooms and, and like the zombie ant and all that and uh all he all he says is like the doctor says is like all something along the lines of you know it only it's only going to take 20 One. 20 10 20 more degrees hotter and that could change everything and i don't know about you guys but we live in california and it's getting hotter every goddamn year to put this in perspective when uh wild and i were, were kids come this time every year It'd be foggier and shit. 50 degrees in the morning on your way to school. 80. And you can't, and you can't see shit until, you know, 9, 10 o'clock. And it maybe got to the 80s. Filming this, it's now midnight on September 9th. September 8th with 107 fucking degrees. Sometime last in July. Bullshit. Sometime in July, we had 118 degrees, which is super <coughs> fucking stupid for this t this area. Yeah. Shit's getting like, hotter. I mean, it's getting hotter. Welcome to hell. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start off with your favorite moments, Grizz, in uh, The Last of Us. I would say, like, the the first scene that really caught my attention and hooked me was when they're walking through that that old like hotel mm -hmm. oh and she's and, yeah and they open that closet and you kind of see the first the clicker around the uh the rest of the cordyceps and for me that was like super nostalgic from playing the first game oh yeah there was there was points uh, in the in the tv series it was just like like yeah. almost, oh, almost word per word, like how the game was. And for me, that's what, because it was real slow up until then. Yeah, you know, yeah. There, 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 there was a, a, a few bits and pieces where it's like, oh shit, yeah, okay, I remember that from the game. I remember that from the game. Oh man, that's cool. Holy fuck! <laughs> yes, I'm watching this whole series. I don't care if they're dead episodes or not. I watched it. It was it was coming out and. Uh... Sophisto, my dad watched it. Uh, Samus was watching it. We're so we we all kind of kind of talked about it when it happened, when things happened, and uh, yeah. See, end. I I I can't do that with like with my brain. Like I find something that I want to watch. Oh, I understand. My attention. I have to binge watch that whole fucking thing, or I start getting mad because I don't know what's gonna happen next. I understand because I I get that. I, I you forget. I also lived through the. Stay tuned until next week, and then you'll find yeah. out what happened to fucking bullshit. One of my favorite, one of like one of the parts that really stood out to me because I was looking for certain areas. I was excited for this event to happen. This and the first event was of course Tess uh, getting bit, and which which happens to coincide with Europe, the part you liked. Yeah, because uh, that's about the time she got bit, and then what she does afterwards, which is basically takes her own life to make sure that that. Ellie and and Joel get to go and Joel further. Survive, yeah. yeah. Which I thought was, I mean, and she's like, "Hey, you know what? I'm fucked anyway. Look at this. Look at this fucking big ass thing on my neck." And oh, he gave me a hickey. <laughs> it got a little rough. So, <laughs> so that's that's gonna be like all an all night thing for those listening. I have I have a gif playing behind me, and it's Joel the uh clicker. clicker and ellie all head banging in the car so if you hear us giggle for no reason that's fucking <laughs> why because <laughs> i look up i keep seeing it Dude. one of my favorite my favorite parts is that part right there where tess uh takes her own life to uh to save to, to make sure they go further and that was like probably one of the big points mm -hmm. that i was looking for um how they would play that i wasn't sure i liked how old they made tess look as opposed to the game, like the actress looked a little older than she should have been, but that that's I, that was a, like a little brat gripe at first, and then it went away after I saw how she acted. Yeah, but I mean, at, 
it it fit in with the, the times. Because I mean, everybody looked a lot older than they should have been because of all the shit going on. Yeah, yeah. So we talked a little bit about the first episode. What was the next like event that you were looking for, Grizz? Um, would have been him trying to smuggle her out. Yeah, that, yeah. After after Tess dies or whatever. Yeah. After the after the whole uh, church incident, I guess we should call it, because that was supposed to be where they were gonna meet up with the fireflies and all them. So, like, one of the biggest things that <clears throat> that really like hooked me was, uh, in, in comparison to the game, was the really the relationship and the bond that was kind of grown between Joel and Ellie. Yeah. Uh, throughout, especially throughout the first couple episodes, but throughout the entire series, um, was just very reminiscent of the game. Oh yeah, because in the game they couldn't, you know, it's you a, didn't stand her, and she didn't like him because the authority figure. And... He thought she was just a shitty not nose little brat and well they thought they were going to get screwed out of whatever deal that they yeah. were offered and you know and, I, it's funny because we talked about we talked about that and none of us neither one of us really mentioned one of the saddest parts in, in, in the ga- in game history was the very first part where Joel is her daughter you know and it doesn't matter if it's the daughter in the the video game or the daughter in the tv series i still bawled like a baby <coughs> oh yeah like i i was still very upset um and there were a few other parts that i knew were coming that i was still upset i was like i was very upset about still because the last of us is a very emotional it's a roller coaster the game and and the series um and i'll say this the series and like I, maybe I said earlier, the series is very, very close to the game. Yes. Um, and what they did change, in my opinion, was for the better. Was for the better. Like it was better storytelling. Mm-hmm. So, not to say the game didn't have good storytelling, but it that was that was immaculate. The second actual uh, event that I, w- I was waiting for was a Franken. Yeah. Um, but if, but I see I we didn't know. The guys who played the games didn't know we were going to get the love story. You know, that kind of love story. We knew yeah. that we knew that we knew that Bill had a part a partner, I'm using air quotes, named Frank in the game. And Frank ends up ends up, you know, in the game ends up hanging himself. Uh cuz he got bit. In the series, we get a whole love story that makes me want to be a better man. You know, it makes me want to go find a a, a a love companion with a big beard. Wild and go go find a a compound somewhere and electric put fences, my own shit in the ground and plant potatoes. Be off, be off the fucking grid. Tomatoes. Yeah. 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 Have one friend in the whole fucking world that I'm not sleeping with, but mm-hmm. Joel. <laughs> <laughs> No, he was too busy with Tess. Yeah. He was banging that Tess ass. Uh, Tess assay. Tess assay. Just the whole concept was just good. It was just... It, you fell in love with both characters in one episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you got to see the rise and fall, of course, and it's very, it's a very Romeo and Juliet kind of story. Yeah. Uh, and, and it explains a lot as to why Bill is the way he... Or was the way he was. Yes. Um, and that's the only, one of the big things, like, and I'm not complaining about that. I actually like that Bill died in, in the series, uh, because you don't hear from him ever again after yeah. you see him in, in the, that one spot in the game. And, uh, I mean, maybe that's why, maybe he did what Frank did in backstory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe it happened differently in the game. I, that's all I'm saying, but uh but it was still amazing what they did in the series the the some of the the changes in the story were like i said were immaculate and i think they were i think we agreed earlier that were they they were needed they were necessary yes. 
because yeah. there's a and, lot of and they, gaps they weren't in the story. Necessarily major changes, but there were filler changes. Yes. Um, to help fill in those questions that weren't answered and weren't there in the game. Yeah. That was one of the the biggest that was like one of the most heartfelt um and and in my opinion needed um you know side stories if you will for the series itself because like you said it answered a lot of questions that that people may have had for the game itself as to why Bill was he was what was yeah. he the way he was in the game. Didn't trust nobody all and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it he still was heartbroken. Out. Yeah, what it, yeah. That it makes a lot of sense. One of the things I was looking for was that after that part, you know, where uh Ellie and Joel go to the compound, that little that whole town that they basically took over mm-hmm. and go through it. In the game they go through it, it's a shit show, it's horrible. In the movie, they just go there or the ser- series they go there, they get what they need, everything's already fine, and then they take off. Well, one of the scenes I was looking for was when Ellie finds the dirty book. Uh, I was hoping, I was really hoping to see things like almost scene for scene on that, and they did it. They they did it well. Um, I was very excited to see that. You know, even the goodbye, dude, or whatever she's when she throws it out the window, and it it was very well done. Uh, I was as far as like the the actors, because I think we we might we might have touched a little bit on this earlier. But the, the as far as the actors go, I was worried about who would portray who well rather than like what they looked like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, a good example is at the very beginning, very first episode. You'll remember there's a, there's a gal that looks just like Ellie, well, except for a little a lot younger. And I think they did that to go like, hey, ha, that's Ellie. Ha ha. See what happens. Yeah. And and like she's she's like limping up and and she tests positive for being bitten and. Uh, long story short, they 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 fucking kill her, and and they're and they show Joel like throwing her into like the fire pits where they're incinerating bodies or something, and it's not her, obviously, it's not her. But that was a good like play on your fucking imagination. I thought. Yeah, because I was like, oh, it looks just like her, and then we find out the gal that they got to play Ellie, who I think is like eighteen, nineteen in real life. Yeah, <laughs> at the time. Um. Uh, was playing her and I was like, Oh shit, you know what? Like that looks good. She 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 got she had the epitome. She had like the whole essence of what Ellie was as she acted. Yeah. Um and I can't say I didn't like any of the actors because there's even cameos by the original voice actors as characters in the series. Yeah. Yeah. Um I believe the guy who played Joel's brother, uh, the guy who played voice acted Tommy actually played the second command of what I guess whoever they the little group they got in the series to replace the cannibals mm-hmm. which i thought was fucking awesome i as soon as i saw him i was like that he looks and sounds familiar and i looked it up i was like ah that's his brother as we as we're going on we'll go to the third part what's your th- since i started last you go go ahead Grizz for for me it would be just the adventure that they went on to try and find uh tommy and the uh the fireflies because that that whole section there was just amazing like you, you see the their relationship and bond grow oh and then yeah yeah kind of falter a little bit and then and they come back even stronger with you know joel finally seeing ellie as like a daughter yeah and ellie you know kind of seeing joel as the father figure that she never really had yeah, and then the gal who played Ellie ended up playing Ellie's mother in the finale. My next like big part in the timeline would be where he meets that uh, that drifter from the again the the group the basically militia that replaced the cannibals. Uh, yeah. The guys that were after them, the 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 guy and his brother. Yeah. Uh, so that was a big part. One of the big changes there was um, the little brother was. Deaf, right? Yes. Deaf. Yes, he he was yes. hard. He couldn't hear, uh, and I thought that was fucking amazing. I you know yeah. it, like you could see, 
Like, don't get me wrong. There was, I think, there were some parts in the game, especially where where the the young, the young man and Ellie are talking and they're getting along, that kind of that kind of got a little more on top of that than the the series did. The young actor that played the deaf little brother did a fucking immaculate job because everything you could see all the emotions in his eyes. It was very well done. Good, good. It was good acting. Uh, Sam. Sam. Yes. Because he would talk on like a sketch, oh. an etch a sketch, right? Like, yeah. He, yeah. I, I think, I think, yeah, he would, yeah, that's how he would talk in the series. It would be like an etch a, etch -a sketch. He'd say something, and then I think uh, at one point Ellie's writing stuff down and talking to him that way. And uh, it was just, it was a really cool way, a really cool change, in my opinion. Uh, that I really enjoyed was when Ellie and her friend uh, Riley. Riley, yes. They kind of edited some stuff out of that, but I, I honestly, I th I didn't care. It was so, the way they did it was so good. Yeah, it, it was really good. You know, you can you can't expect everything to be live action that's pulled from a video game to be like exact. You know, uh, the closest they got is close to perfect, in my opinion. But okay, well, tell us more about that scene, Grizz. It explains more of, you know why Ellie, you know, seems so broken. Uh, why she's no and, trust. And emotionally. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, later on, you know, we, we go and find out that, you know, spoiler alert, she had to kill her friend because her friend got bit. Yeah. And she was going to kill herself and... She never changed. Never changed. <laughs> And that that's just a good backstory. And the funny thing is, is in the in the original game, that was DLC. You had to mm -hmm. you had to pay for that. Till later on, then they made it free. That is a really good part. I think I think we learn about that at the end on the last episode. Yeah. I th oh, another good thing. The gal that got to play Marlene was the same woman who played her in the game. What a great idea to bring back a character like that. He has the same character, you know that. You know that. Right. You know that that gal who played her knew her like the back of her hand. It, it was her character. And it was yeah. her character, and she yeah. did such a good job in the game. You know, mm -hmm. like I said, towards the end we got to meet Ellie's mother, and that's actually she's actually yeah. played by the gal who voice acted Ellie. Um, and by meeting Ellie's mother, it was of course a flashback with uh, with with just story extra story that we didn't get, of course, the game. And uh, so, I, I honestly, I think that was well, like, put in. You know what I mean? Like, it was almost kind of like a, a chef's kiss to the, the original. And you get to you get to see, you know, the original Ellie give birth to the new one. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, Anna. metaphorically and physically right in front of your face. Yeah. It, honestly, the changes were perfect. Everything was perfect. The, the Last of Us, I think, was the first of a good set of, like, video game renditions to uh, to out. real life, to real life, to come out. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying that there aren't other ones that aren't almost as good, but I think that none of them reached that perfection The Last of Us had. Yeah. It yeah. was good casting. It was good. Just everyone's, everyone, you could tell everyone had uh, some sort of char charisma or, like, attachment. To their character. Uh, to their character. And they were yeah. about that. So because of that, you know, big golf clap. Fuck, I watched it twice. You know, I think my dad watched it twice. Yeah. Because that, we recently lost a challenge. Fuck you. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about, you some bitch. So. Fuck you. So, Grizz, tell us from your point of view what happened. He's a goddamn bottomless pit. That's what happened. Well, what happened? Was, what were we I doing? I was set up for failure. What were we doing? We were, we were, we were doing the. Okay, I was doing my challenge. Naruto ramen challenge. It's 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 a big ass bowl like this, and it's full of ramen, full of meat, full of full of fucking juice. Monster and I start at the same exact time. I'm two bites in, and that fucker's already sipping juice out the bottom of the goddamn bowl. I think it was. I think he ate it in like two. Two minutes and like twenty five seconds, I think. It wasn't much longer than two minutes, I because I timed it uh, while we were while I was doing a thing. And I was I turn over to you and you're just like, mm, 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 this is good. And monsters just like, wow, like fucking yeah, donkey dick porn star. 
I mean, you you've seen me. I mean, I, with the the career path that I've chosen, I eat fucking fast because nine times out of ten, I don't get a fucking break. Uh huh. So I so I eat quick. I mean, obviously you can tell if you're watching this. I'm a big fucking guy, <laughs> six three, fucking four hundred pounds. I'm a big fucking guy. Monster made me look like a fucking toddler <laughs> eating that goddamn ramen. <laughs> And then he, and then of course, Monster made his uh, announcement for the punishment on his uh, Nerd Chronicles. Was it last month? Yeah, in the last month. And the the punishment was what, Grizz? Got to play Mortician's assistant. Which, which Grizzly? Is a fucking scary game. Grizzly just got used to handling scary games that are multiplayer. Now I gotta play one that's fucking single player. That's probably one of the scariest games. And he wants me to stream it and play the whole fucking game. Or at least beat it in one way or another. Because I I I that's my fault. I think I told you this. That's my fault because I told him that you would square scare quit. But you're also a man of your word. So, you know. And I'll tell you. What monster came to me because monster texted me that day while before we started the the uh, the challenge, and he goes he or maybe afterwards I can't remember either way he goes he tells me basically, well I'm gonna make him play Doki Doki again and I'm like that's not a good that's not good enough dude like I said I would play it he's yeah Grizzly on, on podcast said on a podcast he would he would play it again it's not a it's not a now I know what now I know what to expect like. For, for those of you that have been listening and, and watching for a long time and uh, follow our content, if you watch that series of Doki Doki Literature Club, uh, it, I, I played that at a hard time in my life. I was, I was going through a lot of personal stuff, and it just kind of hit close to home. But now that I know what it's about, not just a fucking dating sim, but a horror dating sim. With no expect- real choices. Except for who yeah. you you try and get with, there's even then, even then there's no real choices. Yeah, but he, my point is, he said he was gonna he was gonna play it, and I'm trying to tell Monster that uh, that that was a bad idea. So I'm like, you know what? Because he he told me that day, he's like, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. So we when we recorded, that was his response. I I don't know. I told him like, hey, you know, you got about a week. Do it for your your uh, your nerd chronicles. It'll be an announcement. That'll be fun. And he did it, and I, even I didn't know until I saw it. But, well, all I gotta say is uh, now I'm zero and two, and I will not be zero and three. <laughs> well, the ball's in your court for the next one, Grizz. You get to choose who you uh, who you want to challenge, with the exception of the winner of the last challenge. I know I can't challenge Monster, and I also know that. Only one person lives close to me. And I will not lose again. And this person has not lost yet. <laughs> oh, he's getting ballsy! Okay, let's hear it. I will stream this bullshit game. And when I'm done... I challenge Wildfire 1. Why does it gotta be me, man? Why does it always gotta be... You guys suckered me into this fucking weight loss challenge. <laughs> that you won! Shut up! Yeah, but I had to fucking do it! I had to work for it! What time is it? 12.52. No, what day is it? Monday. What? What's that? disappointed in you i'm gonna need a divorce now. it's your birthday yeah oh see it's all you had to do <laughs> i'm gonna need a divorce now you can't <laughs> quit me bitch fuck <laughs> 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 uh, um well happy birthday grizzly but i guess we'll end it there guys um there's, like I said, there's so much we could talk about. Oh, yeah. We, we could talk about this series for forever. I mean, hell, we've done it off podcast. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to talk about it on podcast. Um, yeah. I think we were during our break while the, the show came out. And uh, 
Yeah, Again, as soon as as soon as the show came out, we were like, "Oh yeah, we're doing a podcast." Huh? Ten out of ten for me, as far as shows Same. go. Uh, I, well, I again, I I don't watch. I don't go back and watch shows more than once if unless I feel like something for it. And I I I both times I just loved it, and I I found yeah. out more the second time I watched it. So, uh, guys, if you want to get a hold of us, critique us, tell us you love us, tell us you hate us. Tell us what you want us to try as a snack review. Tell us what games you want us to play. Anything like that. There's a number you can call, and Mr. Grizzly McBee knows that number. That number is 559-997-6803. Again, that number is 559-997-6803. Give us a call. Tell us what you want us to review. Tell us what you want us to eat, drink, play. For the right amount of money. Monster will shove just about anything up his ass. Ask Grizzly. (laughs) (laughs) I am of course twenty bucks. I am of course joking, Monster. Don't get mad. Who am I? Yeah, or are we? You bottomless pit bitch. (laughs) (laughs) I I I say that out of love. He, He knows I'm just fucking with him. Yeah. Uh, or am I? Which, which is funny. Like I said, the first, the during, the, I'm just hashing back to this. During, like I was trying, I told him talk smack to each other when I'm when I'm when I was interviewing him. And Grizzly does exactly what he's supposed to do. I give the, the I put the mic towards fucking monster. He's just like, I'm yeah, hungry. Whatever. And I'm like, I was weak, dude. <laughs> he's like, I'm just gonna let, I'm gonna let what I do tell tell the you know tell the truth. I'm like, okay. One of the Even people my wife and daughter us. were like, "What the hell?" Yeah, well, I, I think, I think your mom went like something. She was, did, is did, he did done? You, did you even chew? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, you know, a little shout out to Sapisto, my dad. He was the he was the cameraman that day for me. Uh, he got a free meal out of it. <laughs> Even he was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And of course, and of course, much love to Sushi Table here in Lamore. Oh, yes. Uh, they were really cool. Gave us a big back area to do that in. And uh, the, the whole back of the restaurant they, they gave to us. To, yeah. To to set up and record. And yeah. Well, I, even they, even they, like everybody that was working there was standing there at the counter watching. Yeah. And uh, the, the girl that was bringing us all the drinks and everything, she was like, Oh, I bet she was. I bet she was eyeballing monster with his fucking massive gullet. Oh. Yeah. Just, just. Yeah, he he ate quickly. Even even I was a little flabbergasted. It, either way, it happened. He won fair and square. Cheating yeah. fuck. Cheating fuck. Fuck <laughs> you, you cheating fuck. Just fix your st- shit, rock star. Yeah. So, all right, guys, that's the end of this podcast. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Till then, we want you to stay nerdy. Stay sexy. And stay sexy. Always.